right, welcome back. We are almost halfway through. In this video, we are going to create a fade effect. And this one is going to get used throughout the project. It's going to get reused several times, which is why it makes so much sense to make it a function so that we can recall it. And we're even gonna set some parameters so that we can manipulate it each time we use it in our code throughout the project. I am going to right click in my uh, functions event sheet. I'm going to add a group and I'm going to just call this fade. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to pick add function and I'm going to call this fade in. All right, with that highlighted, I'm going to move it into the group and then I'm going to copy and paste it. And I'll go in here and I'll change this from fade in to fade out. So let's uh, head on over to our level one layout and we are going to create a fade layer. So let's go to our layers panel, add a layer to the very top and just call it fade. And with that selected and unlocked, we're going to double click and we're going to pick tiled background. We remember we used tile map earlier. This time we're using tiled background. I'm going to insert that and I'm going to change this to uh, I'm just going to go 64 by 64 and I'm going to pick a solid black color. The fill tool, I'm going to fill it. I'm going to exit out of it and I'm going to rename it tile underscore fade. So what we're going to want to do is call on this to act as a fade in and fade out. If I just put this in the top left corner and because it's a tile background, we can just drag it out and it's just still that one sprite and we can cover the entire level. But uh, we don't necessarily have to because I'll show you. Let's just put, uh, I'm going to put it in like that and I'm going to play and we see we're covered. You can see the top of our guy because that fade layer is on top and he covers everything. But if we go further up the level, uh, he's not covering this part of the level because we have it down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we did with the HUD layer. Select our fade layer and let's change the parallax to a zero comma zero. That way our X and Y parallax are both zero and our scale rate is zero. Now here's the fun part. Let's zoom in to our little viewport here. And these dotted lines represent where our viewport starts. And I'm just going to take this solid black and I'm going to cover and we can even overlap it just a little bit. And that's how it's going to get set up. We're just going to cover this viewport area and now that we've taken the scale rate down to zero and the parallax down to zero, I'm going to go ahead and play this and we are in complete darkness because uh, believe it or not the game is running, it's just covered by that solid black tile. We can lock this and we can turn it off so that we don't have to see it when we are working inside the layout. Okay, let's go into our functions. Actually, I did forget to do one thing. Click on our fade object over here in the project file and then go to edit behaviors. Let's add a behavior, scroll down and pick the tween behavior. Let's add that and then we can exit out. So when our fade in function gets called, we want the picture on the screen to fade in from black to whatever we have going on on the screen. So add an action, let's pick our tile fade, and then I'm going to set the opacity, set opacity to 100. And then I'm going to tween the amount of time and the value that it takes to get to zero, which will make the tile fade out but it'll give the effect of fading in. So add an action, go to tile fade, let's scroll down to tween, and we want to tween one property, and that property is going to be opacity. 
and the end value is going to be zero, and the time is going to be, we're going to set up a variable for this. So I'll leave that at five, and I'm going to leave the ease at linear and destroy at no. That's actually never going to be destroyed. It's just going to be either visible or invisible. So let's hit done, and then let's right click on our function, right click on the function and add a parameter. And this is going to be called fade time. And it is going to be a number. And then we are gonna go back into our tween and we're going to replace the five with fade time. And what's gonna happen is when we call this function, it's going to give us the option to fill in this parameter and then we can fill in uh, how long we want it to take to fade in. Okay, now we're going to do the exact same thing for fade out. I am going to add a function. I'm gonna say tile fade, uh, set the opacity. So this is fading out, meaning it's going to be invisible first. So op opacity at zero and then we are going to tween it into full darkness. And that's gonna give the effect of fading out. So add an action, tile fade, scroll down to tween one property. Our end value is going to be 100, and the time is going to be, uh, we did not set that up. Okay, so I'll just leave it at five for a second. We have to create this variable in this function. So let's right click on this function our fade out function at a parameter, and we can call this the same thing, fade time, because it is a local variable. It is local to the function itself. So we can create a thousand different local variables in individual functions, and they can all be the same name because they're not going to be used outside of that function. So that's why this one can have the same name. So let's go back into our tween and replace the five with fade time. Okay, that is set up. Let's go into our start level and I am going to add an action function and fade in and see it gives us the chance to set how long we want it to take. I'm just going to do half a second so 0 0.5 and I am going to move this up to right before we set the zooming. It is going to fade in and start zooming all at the same time. Okay, let's go ahead and go to level one and preview. And there it was, it's very subtle, but it fades in. So like I said, it's very subtle, but this is a function we're going to be using throughout the entire project because whether it's video on YouTube or on television or a movie, when you end a scene or you come into a scene and you make it uh, a little more dramatic with a fade in or a fade out, and that's what we're going to use when we transition from one layout to the next. So it's not a sudden uh, jerky motion of one image just automatically changes to another. We're going to fade out of an image and then fade into another one. All right. I know one more place we can use one of these. Let's go into our controls event sheet. Let's go to player death. Let's go to this bottom one. After all of this happens, the last thing we want to do is fade out. So let's add an action function uh, fade out. And I'm going to do this very dramatic. That's going to be a full one second. And I'm going to move that to the very top. And now I'm going to have to wait for it to fade out before we restart the layer. Because otherwise, it's going to read this and it'll start to fade out, but it won't get done in time before it restarts the layer. So for the effect to take place, we're going to have to add an action, system, wait, and uh, let's wait 1.5 seconds. So we have a full half a second before we restart the layer. In fact, I'm going to move it above destroy too. It's going to destroy our player right before it restarts the layer. I think that'll work. Let's test it out. We fade it in. Everything is working correctly so far. Get up here and we die. And then we, well, hmm. Uh, let's 
take a look at our fade function. Uh, I forgot to change the property that we tween. We are tweening the x property, which makes no sense. So let's change that to opacity. Sorry about that. And then with our level one, we can try that again. A nice little fade in our text and we're off. We're jumping and we're dead. And we still didn't get faded. Okay, uh, let's see. I wonder, okay. So many times when we compare a variable, it's almost as if the code we put behind it is uh, running over and over again while this variable is true, while this condition is true. So I am going to double click and add another condition and I'm gonna say trigger once while true. So what I think is happening is that it's calling this function over and over again while this is true and we set it to be true right here. So I am going to try that and hopefully we have solved it. And we're dead and we fade out, yay, and we fade back in. Ah, do you see how pleasing that is on the eyes? It changes the way the game looks. fade in and fade out and a zoom in. I think it's looking really good. Okay, uh, sorry about the mix up there. Unfortunately, that is a big part of game development and programming in general. You are constantly having to go back through your code and play test, play test, play test over and over again until you find out what's wrong and you fix it. And we were able to fix it. So now we can move on. And in the next video, we will start setting up a goal for the player to reach. That is it for right now. I will see you in the next video and don't forget to save.